For over a hundred years, the Hager Coliseum was the physical embodiment of a lifetime of hard work in the entertainment business for the Hager family. On one cold, damp January morning, the Hager Coliseum closed its doors for the last time, and the Hager flame that had once burned so brightly for so many years suddenly became doused in darkness and left to the mercy of history, where it was forgotten by all but a select few. William Hagger was the pioneer of movie making in Wales. He was born in Dedham in Essex, so he wasn't really a Welshman. He, uh, he was a carpenter by trade, and um, when he came to Wales, he loved Wales so much. Uh, he considered himself as a Welshman when he came to Wales, but uh, by birth, obviously, he wasn't. From what my father said, he was a very charismatic, um, forward-thinking man of the theatre who knew his audience. I mean, the one thing about William Haggart was that he knew from his theatre days the type of films that would bring in an audience. So that put him above his competitors. And he built uh, big travelling shows which went around with the fairground. They were very ornate with uh, organs on the front and dancing girls and um, people loved the, loved the uh, fairground shows and the films were a really uh, new thing and people used to queue and flock in to see them. And his biggest film was called The Maid of Kevin Edba. And this film was a, built around a Welsh traditional love tale. Very sad. It was about Will and Anne. They, they both fell in love, but um, Anne was betrothed against her will by her family to Anthony Maddox, who she didn't like. He was a, a solicitor, I believe, but she loved Will, uh, who was just an ordinary uh, Thatcher. She loved Will very much, but they were never allowed to be together. And um, at, in the end, um, she dies of a broken heart. And Will rushes to her side, and she dies in his arms. And that film brought hundreds of people to the travelling show, and it made Will Haggis fortune, William Haggis fortune. This melodrama was an old favourite of Welsh audiences, and it had the advantage that the story was well known. The story of the film would only need to be approximate. A stage was set up in the sunlight, the actors quickly rehearsed and the film was shot in seven scenes in little more than an hour and a half. Additional action scenes were shot in the hills surrounding my stag and the film was completed. The Maid was first shown in the bioscope in Swansea Fair and in modern terms it was a sensation. The Welsh people flocked to see it. The Maid literally made William Hagger's fortune. It was probably the first British film that related to its audience in a regional sense and it lived on in the collective folk memory of the people of South Wales until comparatively recent times. Hagger's family was an integral part to his art. His son Will was a great resource due to his theatre company. Hagger himself was an actor and travelled with a company affectionately referred to as the Mummers. In 1905, Hagger directed his film entitled The Life of Charles Peace. Based on the life of Charles Peace, one of Britain's most notorious criminals, Peace was an expert in cat burglary. The film reconstructs Peace's real-life leap from a train on his way to trial for the murder of Arthur Dyson. The film is greatly significant in that it contains in it the very first car chase ever to be filmed. The scene where Peace jumps from a train is a precursor to every car chase to follow. How old would these be? Oh my goodness, the old plates. Right, that is the grand, isn't it? 
that one there. Can you see anything from that? Yeah. The bioscopes were uh, basically okay. the cinemas, okay. and they were portable. And obviously, just like a fairground attraction, they were put up and pulled down into every venue uh, that they went to. And they were incredibly elaborate. I think there was something like, when my great-great-grandfather bought uh, a traction engine to power these uh, bioscopes, there was something like 1,500 bulbs. Now, at the time, when they were going into these to, to Welsh mining villages, there was no electric. And I remember my grandfather uh, telling me that no matter how much you try and explain the excitement, that it is just impossible. That you just, you know, it was dark, dingy, it was in the middle of the Industrial Revolution, and then the bioscope would come and it absolutely lit up the Welsh Valleys. What separated William Hagger from any competitor that he might have had is that he had his own company of theatricals. The family did everything. The family uh, acted, they made the costumes, they did the makeup, they made the films. And one of the things that I would look at, or I think is fascinating, is that not all of all of them would have been comfortable with going on the stage. I mean, you think about it, you're born into, you're born into a theatrical family and you're made to go on the stage but you've got, you suffer from stage fright. You know, that was the family business and they all worked in it. The original owners in the Hagger family were William and Jenny Linden. Jenny Linden was William Hagger's wife. Now, William, this is the William Hagger who was the son of William Hagger, the filmmaker, the film pioneer. They were the stars of The Maid of Kevin Edver. Jenny played the heroine and Will played, you know, the, the lover. They were the stars and they set up the cinema in Pembroke first of all. And after them, my grandfather Walter took over. And after Walter, my father. When the dancing days at Haggers were over, the ballroom was made use of as a bingo hall and fitness centre, whilst the former cinema below was converted into a snooker hall. Eventually, the whole building was converted into flats and a nightclub opened where once stood the last Haggers cinema. The queues used to be going right down the main street. People, you know, people used to love it. They used to come in. They were standing all down the sides of the cinema. Oh. My father would never have sold the business. It would have gone down generation to generation. But uh, there we are. People did their courting there. Um, in fact, wasn't it that they could do their courting in the cinema, get married and have their wedding reception upstairs in the ballroom? Something like that. But, you know, they were an infamous family and cinema, you know, was extremely popular for a time. But as different forms of media came along, it became more of a struggle uh, to uh, keep the audience figures up. And everybody would flock to see the pictures. They still... Everybody says to me, I wish Haggis was still there. I never go to the cinema without thinking to myself that he, he was right at the very beginning, look how far it's developed now, but he could see that, he could see the potential that it had. And, and it's a source of great pride, you're, you know, you're sitting in the cinema thinking, well, my great-great-grandfather, he had the idea, he filmed that narrative, that story. He knew, he knew audiences liked good plot, good characters. And that, you know, the, the, the game still remains the same. You've got a good plot, you've got characters, then you will take the audience on a journey. And that is what you ultimately aim to do. And he could see all of that.
For years, Haggers was the centre of entertainment in the town. The end came slowly and painfully. Television eroded the cinema audiences and social expectations changed with growing prosperity. Eventually, the cinema was closed. Bingo prolonged the agony, but then those beautiful, glittering assembly rooms built for Pembroke's aristocracy in the 1860s, which gave so much pleasure for so many people, were stripped to their finery and converted into mundane flats. Alas. Alas, Pembroke's past mere memories, a penny for your dreams.